Welcome back. Let's solve another problem from uh, Physics 2. Uh, this is again a question from one of the previous year question papers uh, we came across a few days ago and I thought it'd be pretty interesting to discuss. So this is a rectangular loop, conducting loop, uh, placed in a magnetic field that is directed into the page. Right, so I think with so many X's I think it is pretty obvious that the direction, I mean the magnetic field is directed into the page. We've been given the dimensions of the rectangle. A is 5 centimeters and B is 10 centimeters. And this magnetic field is reducing, I mean, is decreasing at the rate of 0 0.010 Tesla per second. Right? So there are a few parts to the problem. We'll go through each as we uh, solve. And you know, when we have the time and when we remember, let's convert these into SI units, right? So that we don't go wrong with the calculation. It's 5 into 10 to the power negative 2 meters. And this is 10 into 10 to the power negative 2 meters. So let's keep that in mind when we calculate. So the first part of the problem asks us to calculate the EMF induced in the loop. Okay, so we just want the magnitude of the EMF and we know that EMF is given by d phi over dt and since we just need the magnitude we're going to take its absolute value. Why I keep saying that is because we don't need to really consider, really worry about the, the negative sign for now. Okay, alright, so and we know that phi is given by B times A, where B is the magnetic field strength or, or the magnitude of magnetic field, and A is the area of the conductor, right? So let's go ahead and, you know, we know that A is A times B, right? So let's substitute these there. D B times A B over dt. Now a, b are constants so they can come out but b is decreasing so it gets to stay inside the derivative. So a, b, d, b over dt, right? All we have to do is just substitute the values of being, we've been given here. So a, b are 5 into 10 is 50 times 10 to the power negative 4, right? So 15 to 10 to the power negative 4 times this. Just the number part of it. Let's not take the negative part. So I think this is 10 to the power negative 2, isn't it? Uh, 10 to the power negative 1 if we place it here and 10 to the power negative 2 if we place it here. So that's 10 to the power negative 2. Right. And this is 50 into 10 to the power negative 6 which can be written as 5 into 10 to the power negative 5 volts. <whistles> so that is the induced EMF, I mean the rather the value of induced EMF, right? So that's the first part. The second part asks us to calculate the current, the value of current induced in the circuit if the resistance of the loop is 5 ohms, right? This is pretty straightforward from Ohm's law, isn't it? We know that oh, from Ohm's law, I is given by voltage over R, right? And we're still taking the absolute value. So it's 5 into 10 to the power negative 5 volts and over 5 amp, uh, sorry, 5 ohms, which gives us 1 into 10 to the power negative 5 amps, right? Let's not forget our units. That's the current induced in the loop. Now they also want the direction of the current induced in the loop, right? They want to know how it's flowing in the loop. So let's see. What do we know from Lenz's law? We know that, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm not really sure if I can define it verbatim, but then what it, it basically says, um, the direction of induced magnetic field eh, in, a, in a current carrying conductor is going to be, is going to oppose the field that is causing it in the first place, right? The field causing that is basically this, the present field, which is going into the page. So the induced magnetic field is going to be opposing this, which is out of, out of the page, that's all, right? So the induced magnetic field is going to be out of the page. If it is out of the page, let's use our right-hand rule to figure out the direction of the current flow, right? It's pretty simple. Now. 
we use the right hand rule uh, for current and magnetic field directions and we use them kind of interchanged I mean we can interchange their usage for example for this case uh, you have to point your thumb towards in, in the direction of the magnetic field right in some cases it's sometime in the direction of current flow but for now uh, to, to determine the current flow let's point our thumbs in the direction of the magnetic field so if you do that you know it's coming out of the page right so if your thumb is pointing towards your face basically you know out of the page should be towards your face if you're watching this video right so if you curl your hands around it's gonna go in an um, in a counterclockwise direction through the loop, right? Do you see that? So basically, it's going to go like this, right? So in this case, the current direction is counterclockwise, if I am allowed to use that abbreviation, right? So direction. All right. Now these two parts are pretty simple. Now it gets it gets interesting when in the third part there's a few additions to this circuit. Right, so it's the same loop. Forgive me if I'm not drawing right. I mean, to scale or probably not making it look all pretty. Very bad at drawing. Um, right, this is the same loop. And there's a current carrying straight wire, you know, a straight current carrying wire, just carrying current in this direction and is at a distance of d centimeters from this loop from the left part of this loop right from the left um, oh, let's call it the leg of this loop probably right it's carrying current in that direction from the in, in the top I mean in the upward direction so what we have to figure out in this uh, part of the problem is again induced magnetic induced EMF in the loop because of uh, this setting basically right so if we, um, and, and we know that this is given by d phi over dt, we just did that in the, in, in the uh, above uh, parts, right? And we know again that phi is given by b times a. But, but, if we look at this case, you'll see that because of this current carrying wire on the left hand side of this loop, the magnetic field, excuse me, is going to be stronger on the left hand side and, and will go uh, it will proceed and will go weaker as we proceed to the right hand I mean to the right leg of the loop basically right so it oh, let me take a different color and point that out so it varies the magnetic field right and I, I think you'll be able to find it in your cheat sheet that the uh, magnetic fields formula for a straight line a uh, straight current carrying conductor is basically mu naught I over 2 pi R where R is the distance right so here it will be D but, but we'll talk about that later but just this this is the magnetic field but this is going to change if as we proceed from here to here right so if we call that varying distance X right so this B now becomes mu naught I over 2 pi X where X goes from this is getting too dark this color let me change the color d to d plus a do you see that so this is d and this part is d plus a right as simple as that right okay and we're we we want to find the flux so it's going to be a surface integral and if you see the surface integral, if you take the elemental area, dA, A is basically supposed to be A times B, right? But dA can be, I mean, B doesn't change here, it, it's the same. But as we go from here to here, it's going to be dx, right? Incremental parts of this x we're traveling from there to there, right? That's all it is. So if we, int if we, substitute these two things in this equation we can very well figure out flux let me write this again b a and we have to just you know just to, to denote that we're doing two integrals basically double integrals 
um, because the magnetic field is varying over the surface area, right? So we'll have two integrals basically, but it, it, don't get worried because of that, it's nothing. So all this comes down to is just mu zero i over 2 pi x times this, right? b times dx, right? And this x goes from where? From d to d plus a. That's all it is, right? Now we know that everything here except the dx and x are constant, so we can, we can bring those things out of the integral. Mu zero i times b over 2 pi and this is dx over x where x goes from d to d plus a okay all right so this is pretty simple isn't it mu zero i b over 2 pi ln of x when it goes from d to d plus a so if we apply those integrals i mean those limits of these integrals we get ln of d plus a minus ln of d, right? And that should give us ln of d plus a over d, which can also be written as, oops, I'm out of paper. So mu zero i b over 2 pi ln 1 plus a over d, right? That, that's all it is, right? So this is the flux, basically, induced because of uh, that straight current carrying conductor, right? Now, to figure out the EMF, we have to still differentiate this, right? Uh, so EMF is d phi over dt, which is d over dt, mu zero i b over 2 pi ln of 1 plus a over d, right? And again, you know, here just the current is going to vary. So bring everything out and um, right, so mu zero b over 2 pi ln 1 plus a over d. And I forgot to mention one thing, and this will be d i over dt. And I forgot to mention one thing, uh, is that the in the problem they've given that the current varies as alpha amperes per second, I think. Right? So just substitute that value there. Right? So that's all the EMF is mu zero b over two pi ln of one plus a over d times alpha, right? Oops, alpha, sorry. That's all it is. And now, there's another fourth part to the problem. I hope you're not getting bored. So the fourth part says, I mean, it's a different case, I mean, again, so the loop is the same, B and A. And here there are two straight current carrying wires now. This is carrying a current of I prop, possibly, and this is carrying a current that is increasing all the time. Okay, so now we have to figure out the hold on one second so this is i2 and this is i1 and this is a constant current right and this is increasing okay so what we have to figure out is um what would the direction of the induced current in the loop be in this scenario okay so first of all Look at this straight carrying, I mean, current carrying conductor. It's constant current. So there's no, there's going to be no change of flux to induce current in this, right? We know that we need a change of flux or change of magnetic field to give us um, some flux, right? And here, 
but this is increasing, right? So if this is increasing, it's going to have a greater flux. If you apply the right-hand rule, your thumb pointing towards the way, I mean, towards the direction where the current is flowing, your fingers will wrap around like this, right? So the, uh, the, the magnetic field here is out of the page on this part and into the page on this part, right? So if this, if this is an increasing current, there's going to be all the more flux going into the page, right? Thereby producing a magnetic field into the page. And from Lenz's law again, to oppose that direction, uh, the induced magnetic field in the loop would be out of the page from Lenz's law. Okay, as simple as that. If we need a magnetic field that is directed out of the page, the current flowing in the loop should be counterclockwise again. Right? That's all it is. Just hold on for a second, pause, go back and see if, if, if this concept is clear, right? As this current is increasing, the magnetic flux lines going into the page on this side will be more, thereby, produ I mean, definitely inducing a magnetic field on this loop, which would be directed op opposite to the direction in which this field is, right? And if we need a magnetic field that is directed out of the page as the induced one, the induced current should be in the counterclockwise direction. Use your right hand, right hand again, right? That's all it is. Uh, great discussing this problem with you guys. Um, I hope to see you next time. Thanks.